Week 41, Day 2, Numbers, Chapters 33 to 36. First, let's pray Ephesians 1, 17. I pray the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gracious Father, and ask that he give us spirit of wisdom and revelation, that we may know him better. In Jesus' name, amen. Numbers, Chapter 33. There are signs. These are the stages. These are the stages in the journey of the Israelites when they came out of Egypt by division under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's command, Moses recorded the stages in their journey. This is their journey by stages. The Israelites set out from Ramses on the 15th day of the first month, the day after Passover. They marched out defiantly in full view of all Egyptians who were bearing all their firstborn, whom the Lord had struck down among them. For the Lord had brought judgment on their gods. The Israelites left Ramses and camped at Sukkoth. They left Sukkoth and camped at Etham, on the edge of the desert. They left Etham, turned back to Pi Ha Hurath, to the east of Baal Zephon, and camped near Migdul. They left Pi Ha Hurath and passed through the sea into the desert. And when they had traveled for three days in the desert of Etham, they camped at Mara. They left Mara and went to Elam, where they were, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there. They left Elam and camped by the Red Sea. They left the Red Sea and camped by the desert of Sin. They left the desert of Sin and camped at Dovka. They left Dovka and camped at Elash. They left Elash and camped at Raphidim, there where there was no water for the people to drink. They left Raphidim and camped in the desert of Sinai. They left the desert of Sinai and camped at Kibroth Hatzaba. They left Kibroth Hatzaba and camped at Hezeroth. They left Hezeroth and camped at Rithma. They left Rithma and camped at Ramon Perez. They left Ramon Perez and left and camped at Libna. They left Libna and camped at Resha. Rissa. They left Rissa and camped at Pihilamath. No, Pihi. Leheth. They left Kihi Leheth and camped at Mount Shefer. They left Mount Shefer and camped at Har Harada. They left Harada and camped at Mekalath. They left Mekalath and camped at Tahath. They left Tahath and camped at Tira. They left Tira and camped at Mithka. They left Mithka and camped at Heshmana. They left Heshmana and camped at Moseroth. They left Moseroth and camped at Ben Dakin. They left Ben Dakin and camped at For Hagidgad. They left for Haggidgadad and camped at Jotbatha. They left Jotbatha and camped at Abrana. They left Abrana and left and camped at Izan Gibber. They left Izan Gibber and camped at Kadesh in the desert of Zin. They left Kadesh and camped at Mount Hor. On the border of Edom, at the Lord's command, Aaron the priest went up to Mount Hor, where he died on the first day of the fifth month of the fortieth year after the Israelites came out of Egypt. Aaron was a hundred and twenty-three years old when he died on Mount Hor. The Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the Nav of Cal Canaan, heard that the Israelites were coming. They left Mount Hor and camped at Salamana. They left Salamana 
encamped at Sunan. They left Sunan encamped at Oboth. They left Oboth encamped at I Abram on the border of Moab. They left I Abram encamped at Debon Gad. They left Debon Gad encamped at Almon Di Blom Blomoth. They left Alam Di Blama encamped in the mountains of Abram near Nebo. They left the mountains of Abram encamped on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. There on the plains of Moab they camped along the Jordan from Beth Jeshemoth to Abel Shittim. On the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you cross the Jordan into Canaan, drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you. Destroy all their carved images and their cast images. And demolish all their high places. And take possessions of the land and settle in it. For I have given the land to your possess. To possess. Distribute the land by lot according to your clans. To the larger give a larger inheritance and to the smaller give a smaller one. Whoever falls on them by lot will be theirs. Distribute it according to their ancestral tribes. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land, those you allow to remain will become barbs in your eyes and thorns in your sides. They will give you trouble in the land where you will live. And then I will do to you what I plan to do to them. Chapter 34 the Lord said to Moses, Command the Israelites and say to them, When you enter Canaan, the land that will be allotted to you as an inheritance is to have these boundaries. Your southern side will include some of the desert of Zin along the border of Edom. Your southern border will start on the east from the southern end of the Dead Sea. Cross south of the Scorpion Pass, continue on to Zin, and go south to Kadesh Barna. Then it will go to Hazar Adar, and over to Asmon. There it will turn, join the Red Eye of Egypt, and end at the Mediterranean Sea. Your western boundary will be the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. This will be your boundary on the west. For your northern boundary, run a line from the Mediterranean Sea to Mount Hor, and from Mount Hor to Lebo Hamath. Then the boundary will go to Zadid, Zadad, continue to Zephron, and end at Ezer Enin. This will be your boundary on the north. From your eastern boundary, run a line from Hazar and into Shafam, Shafam. The boundary will go down from Shafam to Reblah on the east side of Ain, and continue along the slopes east of the Sea of Galilee. Then the boundaries will go down along the Jordan and end at the Dead Sea. This will be your land with its boundaries on every side. Moses commanded the Israelites, assign this land by lots as an inheritance. The Lord has ordered that it be given to the nine and a half tribes. Because the families of the tribe of Reuben and the tribe of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. These two and a half tribes have received their inheritance east of the Jordan, across from Jericho towards the sunrise. The Lord said to Moses, these are the names of the men who are to who are to assign the land for you as an inheritance, Eleazar the priest and Joshua son of Nun, the and appoint one leader from each tribe to help assign the land. These are their names: Caleb son of Jephana, 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 from the tribe of Judah. 
Shemuel, son of Ammihud, from the tribe of Simeon, Eldad, son of Keshlan, from the tribe of Benjamin, Bakai, son of Jagli, Jagli, the leader of the tribe of Dan, Hanael, son of Ephod, the leader of the tribe of Men Nessa, son of Joseph, Kemuel, son of Sephetan, the leader of the tribe of Ephraim, son of Joseph, Elzaphan, son of Harnak, the leader of Tal Tael El Elzaphan, son of Harnak, the leader from the tribe of Zebulun. Pal Tael, son of Azan, the leader from the tribe of Ishtar. Ahiad, son of Shilomai, leader of the tribe of Asher. Ped uh, El, son of Amahad, leader from the tribe of Naphtali. These are the men the Lord commanded to assign the inheritance to the Israelites in the land of Canaan. 35. On the plains of Moab, by the Jordan, across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Command the Israelites to give the Levites towns to live in from the inheritance the Israelites will possess and give them pasture lands around the towns. Then they will have towns to live in, and pasture lands for the cattle they own, and their own and other animals. The pasture lands around the towns that you will give the Levites will extend a thousand cubits from the town wall. Outside the town, measure two thousand cubits. On the east side, two thousand. On the south side, two thousand. On the west side, and two thousand on the north. With the town in the center, they will have an area as pasture land for the towns. Six of the towns you give the Levites will be cities of refuge to which a person who was killed, someone, may flee. In addition, give them 42 other towns. In all, you must give the Levites 48 towns together with their pasture lands. The towns we give the Levites from the land the Israelites possess are to be given in proportion to the inheritance of each tribe. May take any take many towns from the tribes that have many, but few from the ones that have few. Then the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into Canaan, select these towns to be your cities of refuge, to which a person who was killed who has killed someone accidentally may flee. They will be placed in refuge with an avenger, from the avenger, so that anyone accused of murder may not die before they stand trial before the assembly. These six towns will give you, these six towns you give will be your cities of refuge. Give three on this side of the Jordan and three in Canaan a cities of refuge. These towns, these six towns will be place, these six towns will be a place of refuge for Israelites and for the foreigners residing among them, so that anyone who has killed another accidentally can flee there. If anyone strikes someone a fatal blow with an iron object, that person is a murderer. The murderer is to be put to death. Or if anyone is holding a stone and strikes someone with a fatal blow, that person is a murderer. The murderer is to be put to death. Or if anyone is holding a wooden object and strikes someone a fatal blow with it, that person is a murderer, and the murderer is to be put to death. The avenger of blood shall be put to death. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when the avenger comes upon the murderer. The avenger shall put the murderer to death. If anyone with malice 
Sarah Fox. Oh, with malice. A forethought. Shove another or throws something at them intentionally so that they die or if out of an enmity one person hits another with his fist so that the other dies that person is to be put to death that person is murdered the avenger of blood shall be put the, the avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when they meet but if anyone but if without enmity someone suddenly pushes another or throws something at someone unintentionally or without seeing them drops to or drops a stone on heavy enough to kill them and they die that then since that other person was not an enemy and no harm was intended, the assembly must judge between the accused and the avenger of the blood according to the regulation. The assembly must protect the one accused of murder from the avenger of blood and send the accused back to the city of refuge to which they fled. The accused must stay until stay there until the death of the high priest who was anointed with holy oil. But if the accused ever goes outside the limits of the city of the refuge to which they fled, when the avenger of blood finds them outside the city, the avenger of blood may kill the accused without being guilty of murder. The accused must stay in the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. Only after the death of the high priest may they return to their own property. This is to have the force of law for you throughout the generations to come, wherever you live. Anyone who kills a person is to be put to death as a murderer only on the testimony of witnesses. But no one is to be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. Do not accept a ransom for the life of murderer who deserves to die. They are to be put to death. Do not accept a ransom for anyone who has fled to the city of refuge and so allow them to go back and live on their own land before the death of high priest. Do not pollute the land where you live, where you are. Bloodshed pollutes the land. An atonement cannot be made for the land on which blood has been shed, except by blood of the one who shed it. Do not defile the land where you live, and I will dwell. Where, and where I will dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the Israelites. Chapter 36 The family heads of the clans of Gilad, son of Mekar, the son of Manasseh, who were from the clans of the descendants of Joseph, came and spoke before Moses and the leaders and the heads of the Israelites. They said, When the Lord commanded my Lord to give the land as an inheritance to the Israelites by lot, he ordered you to give their inheritance to the brother Zelophehad, Ed, to his daughters. Now suppose they marry men from other Israelite tribes. Then their inheritance will be taken from our ancestral inheritance and added to that of a tribe they marry into. And so part of the inheritance allotted to us will be taken away. When the year of Jubilee for the Israelites come, their inheritance will be added to that of the tribe into which they marry and their property will be taken from the tribal inheritance of our ancestors. Then the Lord commanded Moses to give this order to the Israelites, that the tribe of the descendants of Joseph is saying is right. This is what the Lord commands of the Lophad's daughters. They may marry one, they may marry, they may, may, they may marry anyone, they plead as long as they marry within their family's tribal clan. No inheritance in Israel is to pass from one tribe to another. For everything Israelite shall for every Israelite shall keep the tribal inheritance of their ancestors. Every daughter who inherits land is every daughter who inherits land in any Israelite tribe must marry someone in her father's tribal clan. 
so that every Israelite will possess the inheritance of their ancestors. No inheritance may pass from one tribe to another, for each Israelite tribe is to keep the land it inherits. So Zelphad's daughters did as the Lord commanded Moses. So Zelophehad's daughters, Mala, Terza, Hagla, Milkna, Milka, and Noah married their cousins in their father's side. They married with the, within the clan of the descendants of Manasseh, son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in their father's tribe and clan. These are the commands and regulations the Lord gave to Moses to the Israelites in the plains of Moab and the Jordan across from Jericho.